My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is Matthew Haas. That was beautiful. Thanks. It's angelic. I am an angel, so that's what I was yes. going for. Matthew Angel Haas. Mm-hmm. Changed her middle name. Mm-hmm. Still begins with an A. Yeah. Anyways, um, today we are covering another film for our series called... Crisis on Infinite Films. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. You got to make sure you write out the boom, boom, booms when you talk about this, mm-hmm. folks. Anyways, um, we're covering a uh, story of a African superhero whose uh, powers have been passed on from generation to generation. From father to son. Mm-hmm. From 20, in fact. Yes. And no, we're not talking about the Black Panther. <laughs> no, we're talking about... We're talking about a white dude. <laughs> yeah. A white guy from Africa. Well, he's not really from Africa. No. Well, I guess he was born well, I mean, well, He, he is, but... He, yeah. I mean, he it's, was a little kid, so I guess he was raised for most of his life there, so... Yeah. Well, whatever. So, um... Well, no, he, he he was he was there his whole life. Oh, he was. Oh, it was, okay. his, it was his ancestor who was. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Anyway, the um, so yeah, um, we're talking about the Phantom. Mm-hmm. Nineteen ninety six. Yes. Which stars Billy Titanic Zane? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the Titanic. Yes. Yeah. He was also in the Believer, so I can call him Billy Believer Zane. Yes. Doesn't sound good, though. No. Billy Believer? No. If I wanted a middle name, I think I'd go with Titanic yeah, before Believer. Yeah. But then I guess Billy the Believer sounds cool. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, it also stars, it co-stars uh, Treat Williams. <laughs> Treat Everwood Williams. Treat the substitute sequels <laughs> Williams. Who's great in this film, by the way? Oh, yes. <laughs> Christy Baywatch Swanson. <laughs> Christy uh, Under Siege Swanson. Christy Buffy the Vampire Slayer Swanson. <laughs> the movie, not the TV show. Oh, okay. She was Buffy in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah. Was good. Um, and then uh, it also has Catherine married to Michael Douglas Zeta Jones. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. Um, um, Zeta Jones, right? Catherine, Catherine Zorro Jones. Zorro. Yes. That's right. What she else is she Zorro? Zorro. Um, she was in all kinds of stuff. She was yeah. in, um, the movie with, um, was it Arnold? No, it wasn't Arnold. It was, um, uh, where they had, she had to, like, climb through all this weird laser oh, stuff. Oh, that was Entrapment. Entrapment. With, uh, Sean Connery. That's right. It was yes. Sean Connery. Yeah. She was with in that. Marnie oh, Penner? Just, yeah. Mar- Marnie Penner? <laughs> she, she was in that. She was in, uh, Oh, shoot, um, the one with um, Brad Pitt where they're both like spies sent sent to assassinate each other. Um, what was that called, Mister and Mrs. Smith? Uh, no, um, that that was that was. Uh, you're thinking of his. Oh, ex. I'm thinking of um, that's uh, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, that's that's, his, totally his, that's where they met okay. and then uh, he cheated on. Um, oh, yeah, anyways, that's right. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. cheated Forgot on John Aniston. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, the movie also stars James Uncle Gamby Remar. 
<laughs> yeah. James Black Lightning Remar. Yeah, he's in Black James, Lightning. James uh, Mortal Kombat <laughs> Annihilation <laughs> Remar. James um, uh, Chronicles of Shannara or Shannara Chronicles um, Remar. From, from MTV Remar. He plays, um, I forgot the character's name, but he plays a character in the first season of Shannara. So, yeah, Remar. And uh, he also did a bunch of voices for different um, animated series as Based on DC Comics, which is interesting. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This 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 movie is not a DC or a uh, Marvel property. Nope. It's King it's Features. Just, uh, yeah. Yes. It was a comic strip, then turned into a comic book. Oh, okay. Yes. Um. Yes, and it was the free the film screenplay was written by uh, Jeffrey Bohm, who uh, Bohm or Bomb B O A M Bohm Bomb Ba Bohm Bohm Bam Ba Bohm Bohm Bam Ba Ba Bohm Bohm Bam Boem, maybe? Boem. Boem, I don't know. Jeffrey Boem? Yeah, that sounds right. Boem. Jeffrey Boem. 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 Jeffrey. Boem. Jeffrey. Boem. Okay, anyways, um... There you go. Rest in peace. Yeah. Anyways, um... He died? He passed away. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he he's known for writing uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, among other movies. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have uh, the movie directed by Simon Winsor, who uh, is an Australian director who is known for directing. Um, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles, mm. Operation Dumbo Drop, great movie, uh, Free Willy, that's an okay movie. Yes, Quigley Down Under, among others, very good movie. And um, it was based on the uh, the comic created by Lee Falk. Yes. So that's our information section. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Part of it, yes, I think. So, uh, we, oh, the the Newman, the music. Oh yeah, and the yeah. music was done by David Newman, who is Randy Newman's cousin. Yeah, and cool. most of his family have <laughs> done like half the movies you've seen in your life. Right. Yeah. The music for him. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> you, you you wanted to learn learn that, so mm-hmm. you did. Yes, you did. The more you know. Mm-hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. Knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. If you use it. Yes. If you don't use it, it's not powerful. It just sits there, so, you know. Well, yes, there has to be some kind of inertia or mm-hmm. whatever. For, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, substance of life. Yes. Life. You know, life doesn't do anything mm-hmm. for you unless you, you know, pour it into a bowl and mm-hmm. pour some milk on it and then eat it. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. gives you energy. Well, well I, I think you're talking about cereal right now. Yeah, life cereal. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, that does give you energy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really good i like life cereal i like i prefer um you know frosted flakes all, all the stupid kid cereals you know yeah. i do like kicks though that's that doesn't have much sugar in it i yes. do like that so yes but i will tell you this if you what? try to eat the pieces from the board game of life no, yeah, no it, 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 it breaks your teeth and, yeah i'm pretty yeah, sure it's it not good did you not hear good. they're making a longer version of monopoly yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, who wants to? Who who has ever played Monopoly and thought to themselves, you know what, this could be longer. You know, that's my only you know beef with that. Come on, like, yes, I don't get it. The time that I uh, played um, Monopoly for four days, we took we took breaks to sleep. Oh, wow, but we played it for four days. Wow, because we started out with five people playing, and then I was down to two, and then. Um, yeah, the two of us just kept playing until I gave up and lost. Wow. And that was the Star Wars original trilogy collector's edition Monopoly that my ex-girlfriend stole from me. Anyways, um, <laughs> she must have liked that. I don't know, but I <laughs> it's worth money and she stole it from me. Oh, it's like a it's like it's a collector's cool. edition. Well, if you played it then it's it, well, it's still well, it lost worth, some of its value, It's right? still worth money though. Yeah. So what the game is like based on Star Wars? Then, yeah, it's, yeah, oh. like all the all the pieces are Star Wars characters, and oh. and the locations are places like Hoth, and, oh, um, okay. and you know Dagobah and stuff like that. And um, yeah, huh? It's based on the original trilogy. 
And for some odd reason, even though I bought it five or ten years before I met her, she justified taking it. Thanks a lot. Well, I was going to say your name. I just nah, we'll just leave it alone. <laughs> say it. Uh, Don't want to give her any more. More power or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's okay. I've moved on. Yeah, it's been a while. You're, you're it's good. It's been a while. It's been a while since I... <laughs> Wow. So, so uh, this movie. Yeah, so, we, so what happened in this movie here, Matt? <laughs> uh, a 10 minute intro of Monopoly what, what? And, and Life Cereal and um, and what else we talked about? Life we is talked, like a box of cereal, we man. Talked, yeah. <clears throat> this movie, okay, so like we kind of talked through most of it, but I think we got a pretty good grasp of what happened in it. Uh, it's very like um, Indiana Jones kind of. Like the the style of it is very much like that. Very like an old old cereal. Speaking of cereal, yeah, <laughs> spelled differently. Yeah, um, <laughs> an old movie cereal. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like this dude, he you know he sees his dad get killed by this guy who's like a pirate or something, and he gets washed up. Yeah, and early in the 16th century, a young boy helplessly witnesses his father's death at the hands of Kaba Singh. Yeah. Oh, that was, oh, that was a flashback. Sane. That wasn't the yeah, actual. No. Okay, that wasn't Billy. Sane. Sane. S E N G H. So, Sane. They, yeah, they show the kid wash up on the beach, and then the you know the, this tribe or nation you know finds him, and then they take him home, and they do like you know a little ritual to kind of like you know initiate him into the community, and then that kind of goes into the present time with the the current um, the twenty first Phantom. Yeah, the twenty first Phantom in nineteen thirty eight. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he's just doing his thing. He's he's you know like a hero kind of. He uh, whenever he kind of like kind of like a bat signal. He gets like a signal, I guess, when somebody's trying to do something or whatever. Because um, and his, his name is Kit Walker. His by name the way. is Kit Walker, which is a pretty cool name. It's a really cool I like name. That name. I like that. And uh, so Uncle Gamby. I'm gonna change my name to Kit Walker. Okay, okay. go ahead. So Uncle Gamby from Black Lightning is um, trying to get some skulls. Like a special magical skulls that are like, you know, silver and gold and stuff like that that are supposed to have some kind of power. Silver and gold. Uh, silver and, and gold. And he's trying to steal it for Treat Williams, who plays this like stereotypical nineteen thirties business mogul, like you know. But he's he, he plays it so funny though, like he named Xander Drax. It begins with an X yeah. and ends with an X. Yeah, that's, he says that later on. That's a great name too, yeah. Xander Drax. Yes. Yeah. You know, if someone should do a meme where they take Drax from the Guardians of the Galaxy and they place, they splice them together. I don't know. So that's, that would be a really obscure one that I think nobody two, will get two that. Would get. Like, wait a minute, I know that yeah, guy. No, yeah, the two um, people that'll get it'll be you and me. Yeah, it's like, I love doing that sometimes, making memes that like nobody else will understand. Yeah, I like I did one like, a couple weeks ago. I don't, I don't think even you got it or you, I don't know if you saw it, but I took a picture of Al Gore's face. And I put it on Gloria Estevan for the, um, you, you, you gotta get the rhythm or whatever. Right, rhythm's gonna get you? Yeah. So Al Gore rhythm, algorithm, nobody got it. And, uh, <laughs> it was very bad too. Like I just took like, I didn't do any like actual like Photoshop. I just literally just took an image of his face to splice it on top of her. <laughs> like I didn't do any kind of like transmorphine or whatever. Cause I don't know how to do that stuff. So I just lazily, you know. <laughs> Al Gore rhythm. Yeah. Al Gore rhythm. Yep. Because he invented the internet, you get it? So algorithm, it's like a double meaning. Yes. Yeah, I had fun with that one at two in the morning, and uh, after like, you know, being really tired and punch drunk, I guess, or whatever. Punch drunk love, like Adam Sandler. You know, it's a good movie. It is a good movie. Actually, quite a few of his movies actually aren't that bad. Some of them are actually pretty good. But anyway, so like, um, Treat Williams plays this dude who like, I'm clearing my throat. I got, I got, I got some stupid, um cold or whatever from the weather or whatever it's called the weather yeah whatever it's called the weather you know that thing the the sky stuff you the know climate the climate there we go um the um the environment the environment the environment yeah uh so treat williams he's like this dude who wants these skulls because he's part of some brotherhood i forgot the name of the brotherhood uh, that's supposed to be like you know, like dark magic and stuff. Well, he's like not that. part of the. Thing. Oh, he's not. Oh, sorry, he's Quill not. is that's the right. guy. The guy that James Remar plays. <clears throat> that's right. He because he commissions him to collect the skulls for him. And there's a scene that so I've never seen this um this contraption any other movie ever. He's got like a like a microscope that has knives that shoot up. I've never seen this in any other movie 
before or after this. Then he's got some guy that I guess double crossed him or something like that. And he taught, you know, he brings him in for a meeting or whatever. And he asks him like, Oh, by the way, one more thing. Can you, I need a, you know, fresh pair of eyes to, you know, check out this thing or whatever to see if it works. And then, you know, he's like, Oh, I, I can't see. It. Oh, just, you know, turn on the focus and right as soon as the focus works it says liar and then they hear the screaming sound because the knives just cut his eyes out it's all messed up what you got there the oh you drew him that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> so treat williams you know the aka the substitute has this weird device that stabs people through a microscope i think it was a microscope but wasn't that what it was called or is that yeah that's a microscope okay the thing you make, look at i was, well, I was making sure if it, i didn't know if they had those back then 1930 of course they did <laughs> anyway uh he kills yeah, him they, they were invented in 2012 yeah, yes <laughs> he kills him and then some bunch of other stuff happens uh the woman who's like the niece of uh the head of the newspaper yeah head of the newspaper yeah, that guy uh, yeah that's uh that is a. Uh, Christy Swanson's character, right? Who is named Diana? Uh, yeah, Diana. I'm trying to remember her last name <clears throat> off the top of my head. I can't remember it, but yeah, she's a uh, Diana Palmer, I believe. Yeah, that's that's the right name. Yeah, she goes home to some fancy party for some charity or something like that, and uh, she gets kidnapped. I think, or I don't remember. Yeah, exactly she's happened. kidnapped by uh by uh. Um, by 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 uh, James Remar's character Quill yeah, yeah. and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones's character, um, who is named I forgot her name. I don't I know if they ever that. said uh, her it's, name. Oh, her name is um, Sala. Sala. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, name. like the character that uh, that um, that <laughs> that that uh, John Reese Davies plays in um, the Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> oh wow! I, <laughs> I just realized that's, that's the same name. That's I just like, wait a second. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> they do that. She, uh, they, they put her on uh, like an all female plane or something like that. I yeah. guess, I guess, like this brotherhood has like a sisterhood subsidiary or, or part, you know, like extension, you know, of it or whatever. Because all the and she said all the pilots are women, but there was like a lot of people there. I don't think you need that many pilots. I mean, there's like twenty people. You need twenty people to fly a plane. I don't know. Uh, maybe on they, Tuesdays, maybe they all take over for each other. And they're just constantly flying. They never land. I don't know. Maybe we weren't paying attention at that point, but uh, to know what was actually happening. But um, it's not the it's not that the movie was bad, mind you. It's just that we just talked through most of it. It wasn't boring. It was actually a pretty decent movie, really. Uh, you know, the graphics were okay. They, they didn't really try too hard to do something that was too much advanced for what they were able to do they kind of knew their limitations which actually i think is good because a lot of movies don't seem to know that aka the man thing <clears throat> uh you know which was directed anyway i'm not gonna get into that but um, yeah we already, talked about, <laughs> we already talked about him uh but um what else happened mike what happened um so <laughs> on the island why there um the, okay, uh, what they do is they—I they, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Okay, he 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 saves her, rescues her, Phantom. Yes. Right at some point on the plane. Yes. And then he gets caught by the um, the dude. What's his name again? Thrall or Cole? What's what's Re, what's Remar, Remar's name? Quill. Quill. <laughs> Like a, like a pen. <laughs> so he gets caught by Quill once again, and then they they take them somewhere else. No, and then but then they get away because Quill um, because Phantom has a pet wolf, and then the wolf helped fight, and then they went and escaped into a, a plane. Him and um, Diana went into a plane, and they flew. And I thought for a second that he was just going to leave his his wolf behind. I thought that was yeah, a pretty poor dick wolfie. move. I was like, you're just going to let this dog die and the thing. But no, it was because the wolf ran to like a different part of the island and knew how to get to where they needed to go and then he went to inform he basically he started acting like lassie and he went to inform the horse and, and timmy fell down the well yeah he told him that timmy fell down uh, so then the horse was running too to get to help timmy and then um and then something else happened at some point um they got into another fight i think there's lots of like fighting in this movie kind of like the old style like Indiana Jones battles, like, you know, street battles between people with swords and stuff like that. There actually wasn't a lot of guns 
in this movie. There's only a few, I think, gunshots in this movie. It was mostly swords and knives. Bang, bang. Yeah. But they did shoot the, the, the plane, I know that much, because the fuel was running out because of the bullet holes. Bullet holes? That's a hard phrase. Bullet holes. That's a bullet hard, holes. That's a hard. Bullet holes. That's a hard phrase bullet to holes. say. Bullet uh, holes. Yeah, that's, wait, what, wait, that's what? what it sounds like. <laughs> bullet holes. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to land a plane, you know, in, in like an emergency fashion. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else happened after that. They, uh, well, Treat Williams starts getting re- really ridiculously funny throughout the movie because his he's, character. He's like in a different movie yeah, than everybody he else. He's, it's great. <laughs> He's he's, he's 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 the best part of this whole movie. He's joking all the time. He's like he treats like dark magic like it's like funny. Like 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 um, there was this great scene where he's having like a like a meeting with all these people that's supposed to be like part of his plan or whatever. And the one guy, he's like, "I'm not gonna do this. We're talking about dark magic, and stuff just gone too far. I was an altar boy, and and so was he." Pointing to his brother. And then, you know, his brother's like, you know, you're on your own. I'm going to stay with him or whatever. So the other guy runs out and off. And then Treat Williams is like, oh, that's how you feel. And then immediately, I mean immediately, like not even a second after he finishes his phrase, he just takes a spear and just throws it at the guy and kills him. And nails him against the door. The best part is when he takes the spear out of the guy. Yeah. The guy falls to the floor, and then he examines the little uh, nick in the wood on the on on the wall. It, it that, that was perfect acting. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. He's like, oh, I just chipped my you know the wood here. And, you know, like, God damn it! But he's like, yeah. Oh, if that's how you feel, <laughs> just takes up the spear and just throws it mm-hmm. at him. And then there was another scene um, where, uh, well, you you were the one that said it. We found it first when he's like, great news or, or exciting news or. Oh, yeah. Exciting news. We're going to the Devil's Vortex. <laughs> some, like, some like, like like you're going to Universal Studios or right. something, you know, or Disney. And he was so giddy and childlike about it, too. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. Because the Devil's Vortex is the place where the third skull is because they need they need to collect all the skulls to have, like, unlimited power, I guess, for some reason. I don't really know what they're going to do with the power, but whatever. And um, so, like, you take the two skulls together and and then it's supposed to point to where the third one was. So then it like shot out like some laser stuff into a hole in the map, and then that that's where they're supposed to go. So then now 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 the movie's a skull hunting, you know, story basically. You gotta get the third skull. You know, your typical skull hunting movie. Yeah, you know, one of those things. And I like the crystal skull. Hmm, interesting, because one of the, one of the skulls actually was crystal in this movie. I think kind of. Hmm, okay, whatever. And then in the middle, Crystal Gale came out and sang a song. It was really yeah, weird. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. No, that didn't happen. No. And then uh, they find the skull. I'm kind of skipping a whole bunch of crap here. It's okay. Right? Um, a bunch of stuff happens. Hopefully you watch the movie before you listen yeah. to us. <clears throat> a bunch of stuff happens in between that. Um, they they get into a bunch more fights, obviously, with people. Uh, the Phantom, he he has these periodic conversations with the ghost of his, his father, I guess. Yeah. And, like, nobody else can the see him. The former Phantom. Yeah, the former. No one else can see him, so people think he's, like, just talking to himself or whatever. Talking um, to myself and feeling old. Sometimes I'd like to quit. Nothing ever comes of it. Hanging around some kind of lonely clown. Rainy days and phantoms always get me down. What's that from? What is that? That was Rainy Days and Mondays by... uh, By, by by the carpenters. Oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> uh, don't sue us for me singing that that long. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I changed the one lyric, so it so it was a parody. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Because I changed it to Phantoms instead of Mondays. Well, there you go. Yeah, that works. <laughs> it still works. <clears throat> I don't know what else happened. I, I'm skipping a whole bunch of I stuff know. here. Um, I think I think Diana got kidnapped again at some point. Well, they they uh, they, they all got kidnapped sort of like when they got on the island. Um, there was this problem where they, they all kind of do this, and then Catherine Zeta-Jones' character kind of became good at the end. Oh, she did? I totally missed that part. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, she wasn't having it anymore. And uh, they're, on the, they're on the island and uh, towards the end of the movie, and they run into the, the pirates, the, the, uh, the, the sane guys. Which brings me to my question, Matt, that I asked during the movie, and I'm wondering if it's true. Okay. If you're a member of... The, the the scene. Mm-hmm. Are you insane? No, because you're sane. But you're in 
sane. Yeah, you're in it, but you're not. So, 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 so then you're insane. Well, you know, you're in the same. Yeah, I guess you could be. <laughs> but the problem is, though, that you have to be sane in order to join it, though, because they want they want to make sure that you can, you know, do stuff like and, and uh, legally sign the documents to join, right? What's that? Oh, wait, no, no, there's no documents. <laughs> They probably have some initiation, right? But I don't think there's any documents or anything to sign. Yes, they make you watch um, <laughs> bad movies and yeah. you get to join. <laughs> yeah, and that guy, the leader of that, played the dude who played um, um, the bad guy in the first Mortal Kombat movie. I forgot his name. Um, yeah. So, but he yeah. was he was also in the um, an '80s movie, um, Little Tro- Big Trouble in Little China. What was it called? Or was it Little Trouble? I don't remember. Big Trouble in Little China. I think he was in that. I think I said that yeah, he was in that too. Hey, by the way, uh, the Phantom's father is played by uh, actor Patrick McGowan. Mm, okay, he looks familiar. Yeah. The uh, hmm, they don't have that guy listed right here on this on Wikipedia. Okay, anyways, um, <laughs> so um, yeah, they, well, they they get. They they have a little show off, sh- showdown with the guy and um and Treat Williams is all excited because he's like I've got two of these skulls <laughs> and uh, you've got one of them and you know trying to negotiate with the guy and then he's like well you don't have the fourth one <laughs> which turns out is uh, we find out is the ring that the Phantom wears yeah Kit Walker <clears throat> so that's that's the whole mystery solved right there yes there was actually a fourth skull mm-hmm. that no one knew about. Yes. Or he knew about. <clears throat> That's a pretty cool doodle. I, I like that. The yes, Phantom. The Phantom. I like that. I drew the Phantom, folks. If you would like to see that, <laughs> go donate money to our... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to see doodles yeah. that Mike makes during our podcast. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you all of them <laughs> if you donate even just five bucks to our uh... <laughs> to our Patreon. Um, anyways. <laughs> wow. Buy one of our T-shirts. Yeah, I've got some good ones. If you'd like, I can even put the Phantom on a T-shirt Ooh. or something. You know, maybe is I that legal? Probably, I, don't I, don't, I don't think I legally can do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so get sued. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, so then, anyways, uh, they they end up killing the the pirate dude. Mm-hmm. Um, after he kills some other people. <laughs> um, a bunch of people die, including the brother of the guy that got speared. Oh yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, the yeah. cannon. They killed him with a cannon. That was that was cool. And then, um, not like a cannon camera, but like no, a cannon, like an cannon, actual cannon. cannon. Yeah. yeah. And then, they didn't just throw a cannon camera at him and <coughs> kill yeah. him or something like mm-hmm. that. That'd be cool. They hit him right in the right spot in the head and just, you know, I, I need to rig up my camera so it has a gun in it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And then I can say I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> whoa. whoa. <laughs> God. <laughs> with my camera oh my god, oh, god. Mm. i'm insane mm-hmm. no i'm not insane i'm in sane yeah y- you know what i mean yeah i do okay <clears throat> so, I get, yeah i know you got it you got it i get I, it get it got it good I, I get it so um yeah and then basically we end happily ever after Kind the, fan, of. the Phantom beats up everybody, and everybody's <clears throat> all happy or whatever. He's still got to protect the protect the jungle. <clears throat> well, Treat Williams died yeah. during their fight because mm-hmm. he had the three skulls, and he was facing off against the one, the skull of the ring, and then Phantom was still able to overpower him, even though he had the three full size skulls because the Phantom, you know, was more pure of heart, knew how to use it better or whatever. So he's killed him he turned into fire basically <clears throat> just body yeah. just disappeared in flames like you do yeah like you do and uh yeah so that's that happened and then but yeah like you were saying yeah about the the whatchamacallit the jungle yeah he protects the jungle goes back in and he shows uh he tells the story to uh to diana about like you know his life and everything and then uh the end uh she asks him to take off his mask and she admits that she knows he's Kit, mm-hmm. and uh, he does. And somehow the somehow right when he takes it off, the uh, the black makeup he had around his eyes, like in most of these fucking movies, is gone. <laughs> I even saw that recently on an episode of a uh, episode of um, of Arrow. Oh, really? There, there, there's a scene where um, the uh, the black siren takes off her mask, and you can tell that Katie Cassidy had. 
you know, black makeup around her eyes, on mm. her eyelids and whatnot. And then she takes it off and there's none there. I mean, same thing, like, mm. when all the Batman movies and everything, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I don't wow. get it. Somebody needs to explain that someday. I want to see a movie where they take <clears> it off and the and the guy or girl rubs it off of his eyes. Yeah. Or her eyes. That would know? be cool. So, yeah, that'd be <sighs> that one of these be, days. That would be good. When I make my superhero movie, mm. that's going to be great. Mm. You know what it's going to be called? Mm, what? The Great. The Great. Okay. Yeah. The Great. So that's going to be the name of my character. The Great. The Great. Just the Great. Yeah. Not the Great this mm-hmm. or that. No, just, just the, the great. great. Okay. <laughs> and you know what his powers are going to be? <clears throat> what? He doesn't have to tell you because he's great. Man. Okay, so he just yeah. And he and he eats frosted flakes. So he's a confidence man. He, he just... eats frosted flakes. Flakes. You know why? Why? Because, because they're, they're great. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you want to take a break, Matt? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Collin the second from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it uh sometimes we have guests sometimes we don't um just depends on how we're feeling yeah and uh you know so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter then you should definitely check this out or i might get sad and when i get sad it gets pretty sad so i can't deal with him when he's sad yeah no one can really so um yeah So so check out uh super story podcast right here where you get this podcast super story podcast Magus Elgar's apprentice, Udo Malaki, comes from a family of dangerous, exciting casters. Hi, I'm Udo Malaki, and, um, I do magic. Even if his ambitions only go as far as staying alive. You know, I was really hoping you were going to say something a bit more positive. Not exactly an ideal Magus. Mm. You can hear Udo Malaki and his exciting adventures in the upcoming radio comedy, Magus Elgar. Visit MagusElgar.com to download your copy today. And we are back. Okay, we're going to cover some of the little bit of trivia here that I called from the interwebs about the movie 1996's The Phantom. Phantom. The Phantom. The ghost who walks. Spooky. It's not that spooky, but... No. Music is sometimes in the movie. <laughs> yeah. But, um, okay. Billy Zane, who starred as the Phantom, a.k.a. Kit Walker. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Is that okay? Mm-mm. No. Okay, no. I'll stop. Um, he pumped iron for over a year to fill the Phantom's costume. A Batman-like costume with fake muscles was reportedly made, but the... But by the time filming started, Zane was so beefed up that he did not need it. Huh. Go Billy Zane. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Palmer Mansion set is actually the real-life Playboy Mansion that was at the time owned by Hugh Hefner. Okay. Interesting. That is interesting. Um, when not filming, Billy Zane had a habit of running out to buy sushi wearing <laughs> his phantom costume. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Um... One of the Phantom's trademarks in the comic strip has uh, um, one, one of the one of the Phantom's trademarks in the in the comic strips. His striped underpants was uh, tried on the movie costume, but reportedly looked too silly to be used in the final film. Several scenes developing a romance between the Phantom, Kit Walker, and Diana Palmer were shot in Thailand, but director Simon Winzer reportedly ditched them because he wanted the film to be more fast-paced. Bruce Campbell, among other actors, was considered for the role of the Phantom. Um, I remember that back in the day when they were considering him, actually. Um, uh, who's Bruce Campbell again? I'm trying to... He's in... Um, in the, uh, the, 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 the Evil Dead movies. Oh, okay. And he played Ash in those, yes. Okay, cool. He's in Bubba Hotep as huh, Elvis. Okay. 
<clears throat> yeah, I remember that. I was just thinking about that a few mm-hmm. days ago. I love that movie. Um, <laughs> JFK. Yep. <laughs> the skull is a dominant symbol in the Phantom's life. He lives in the skull cave. He wears a skull ring. And in the movie, he's trying to find three skulls. If you look closely to his costume, you will even see a skull design on it. Huh. So, like, on the actual fabric, oh, okay. there's skulls all over it. It's oh. interesting. I noticed that. Uh, the 19, in the 1970s, pre-production began on a low-budget Phantom feature to be shot in Mexico with Batman star Adam West in the titular role. <laughs> well, However, <laughs> there were issues with the character rights, and the film was scrapped. Dolph Lundgren was considered <laughs> for the role of the Phantom. <laughs> that would be interesting. When it was in development in the late 80s and early 90s. Jenny McCarthy and Jennifer Lopez both auditioned for the role of Sala. Oh. Eventually, director Simon Windsor cast Catherine Zeta-Jones due to having enjoyed working with her on the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, um, Palestine, October 1917, the 1993 episode. Huh. Yes. Um, <coughs> I think they made the right call with her. The Phantom's father was born in 1872 and died in 1932. He had not been killed seven years earlier. Um, Had he not been killed seven years earlier, he would have been 67 years old in 1939 when the film takes place. Patrick McGowan, who plays the role, was also 67 years old when the film was being made. Uh. Joe Dante was originally slated to direct, but left due to other commitments before this. Joel Schumacher was considered as well. A.K.A. the uh, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin director. Um, Yeah, director Simon Winsor mentioned in an interview that Minnie Driver was originally cast as Sala, but dropped out due to scheduling conflicts. Which contradicts the last statement that I said about her <laughs> character. <laughs> so, anyways, um, that's just interesting. Yeah. Uh, the comic was set in Africa, but the film is set in Thailand, I guess. But I guess it's, I think I thought they said it was Africa. Well, they said Bengala. Yeah, I guess they just made uh, up. Yeah, and the the people there looked kind of like. Asian, so yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Africa's a big place, so. but at the beginning, I mean, it was just weird. Yeah, yeah. but anyways, um, the uh, Billy Zane shaved his head to get the Phantom's cowl to fit as closely as possible. This necessitated all his scenes where the Phantom is out of costume, with a full head of hair, to be shot early in production. The scene where the Phantom removes his cowl was shot in two parts in reverse order several weeks apart. Interesting. Hmm. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. Okay, so those are some nice little trivia tidbits. Mm-hmm. Oh. Anything else you want to add here before we <clears throat> before we take a break and then come back with some some uh, user reviews oh, from user IMDb? Review. No, just, um, <clears throat> you know, I liked it. The movie, I, I like the fact that he didn't really have like any superpowers really, except for that the ring, of course. But that was that was pretty much it. It was pretty I much just his, his training. I did like his costume being kind of well corny, but I liked it. You know, yeah. So that's that's about it. But it, 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 yeah. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, we a lot we, more exciting than that though. Yeah. So, 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 so we, we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah. They're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so, uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we, uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like, uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and, uh, a futile and stupid gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
and make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. Bye bye. And we are back. Mm-hmm. Back. 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 Back in purple. Back in purple. Yep. <laughs> back in purple. And I see blurple. I don't know. ACDC sucks, but me too. Sorry. I mean, I don't suck, but I think they suck yeah, too. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're replying to those. I said I hate ACDC. You're like me too, but then I was like, I I threw you through a loop there. Yeah. <laughs> They're not that bad. They're just not that great. Yeah, but, um, I'm not a big fan of them or Kiss. Yeah, Kiss. And if, is, that, if that loses any listeners, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Who cares? Kiss is way overrated as a band. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they have, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's read some uh, reviews here called from the uh, Internet Movie Data or Database. Data Database. Data data. 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 Okay. Anyways, Brent Spiner. Anyways, um, the. Uh, <laughs> Here is one from Kuratatsu from July 16th of 2002. Hmm. 10 out of 10. Okay. Excellent adaptation, exclamation point. This movie does the character justice in so many ways. For those of you that don't like it, you may be expecting too much from it. Watch it as if you were a kid. Billy Zane was an excellent choice to play this character. Treat Williams is way over the top. Carrie Tagawa as the evil Kabai Sang Sign, I'm sorry. Uh insane, I'm sorry. Kabai Sane choose enough scenery that the film should bunch in the projector. Huh. All I can say is enjoy. Enjoy, indeed. I did enjoy it. I did, too. I, uh... Mm-hmm. Let me find another one here. Okay, here's a uh, half a star out of ten. Oh, okay. That's what this person gave. <clears throat> um, right. Named uh, Liam Murphy 1, back in December 12th of 2004. Billy Zane might be a sexy guy. But he's pretty awful actor. Um, but he, but he's a pretty awful actor. He has no charisma whatsoever, which is probably why the film flopped big time at the box office. I was reading those like that because they capitalized. Because, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, the film itself is actually very well made and is very enjoyable. Sort of uh, Indiana Jones style with a great locations and realistic 1930s feel. With a different lead actor, probably would have done better. Co-starring original Buffy, Christy Swanson, and straight-to-video King, Treat Williams, and lovely Welsh actress Cathra Zeta-Jones before her rise to superstardom. (laughs) Yeah. Gave it a half a star. Just because he didn't like the lead actor. A half a star. <clears throat> okay. Yep, a half a star. How many stars, Matt? <clears throat> um, zero point five. Is that half? <clears throat> it, I don't understand your fancy digital numbering system. Hey, well, you get used to it because. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was trying to do something funny there, and I just kind of get used to it. Mm-hmm. Yep. <coughs> yeah, let's cough right into the microphone. That's good. Good job, Matt. You can that, do that. That's what the listeners want to hear. Well, that brings us to our next new podcast we're going to launch. <laughs> it's called All Too Cough <laughs> with Matthew Haas. Okay. He'll cough in various different ways, sometimes, uh, sometimes in different languages. I'll intentionally just try to get colds, and I'll just... Yes. A, a year-round cold, and then I'll just constantly cough. Yeah, but you have to cough in <clears throat> Spanish and Arabic, because you're learning those. Well, yeah, but uh, how do you cough in a language? I don't understand that. you got to learn how to do that, man. And I am learning those, but it's taking forever, <clears throat> and I don't know if I'm not learning it right or if I'm just taking really slow to do it. Well, Taking well, really slow? Really? Well, I, th- I think you'll learn the language once you learn how to cough in those languages. Yeah, I think so, too. That's how it goes. Then I gotta learn how to laugh, too. You gotta learn how to laugh. <sighs> learn how to breathe in those languages. Yeah, I think <laughs> yep. Otherwise, you'll die. <laughs> actually, no, that's interesting, though, because, you know, some languages actually do 
have certain words that, that actually require more of your breath. So actually, you, you, you breathing actually might be part of the language. And I'm sorry, I'm getting all philosophical all of a sudden, but well, that's uh, that's uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I heard that sarcasm. No. Like, yeah, it's good. Um, I didn't know what else to say, <laughs> yeah, so I, I just I said, good. I don't know what to say either. I'm just... Yeah. So, um, I'll read another bad review right. of it. This is from <laughs> August 3rd of 2015, mm, okay. from Foghorn48001. Okay. You know him. Mm-hmm. Wait. <laughs> I can just tell already by the name. Unmistakably Terrible. One out of ten stars. This movie... Knows it is awful. It doesn't even have the good sense to poke fun at itself. A nod or wink to let you know that the people who made it are aware of what they're making. Well, not everyone does lampshading, so, yeah. you know. The dialogue plays out like a conversation between three preteens. The action is similarly brainless. Hint, horses can't run faster than airplanes. And loose nets that drop from the ceiling aren't really effective traps. I don't think I heard a convincing spoken word or saw a convincing action sequence during the whole movie. Oh, boo-hoo. It's so entirely terrible that I, that I kind of want to charge HBO rent for letting me play it on my TV. Wait, what? They want to charge HBO rent. For letting them play it on their TV, you do realize that HBO is, a, is a, basically like a streaming service, essentially that you and, pay for. But what basically what he's saying and, is, is I want to make them pay me for watching it. Well, basically, no, no. yeah, nope, yep, <laughs> yep. That's the thing with those streaming, like not streaming, but <clears throat> what well, is streaming? It's just well, this was like, 2015. It was like, probably on regular TV, right? Was, yeah, know, it was four years ago, like, four or five, five years, years ago. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, but it's like forced streaming almost because. You know, they control the timing of, like, a certain movie coming on, whereas opposed to, like, Hulu or something, you can just watch it whatever you want. But, you know, whatever. Still, you, you bought HBO, so it's... And you, you chose know. to watch it. Yeah, so... Yes. Unless you were tied to your chair with HBO on the TV yeah. and you couldn't <coughs> leave. Which happens often, you know. HBO, really? Yeah. Only HBO, though. Showtime doesn't yeah. do that. Because HBO is not TV. It's HBO. It's HBO. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when... Did they, people ever say HBO stood for horrible body odor when you were a kid? No. It's just my neighborhood? Okay. It's probably just yeah, I think it was just your neighborhood. Yeah, my neighborhood was stupid, full of stupid kids, stupid people. Yeah. They, they, they used to say that Showtime meant um, Showtime. <laughs> yeah. And it used to call Cinemax, well, you know, skin, C- Cinemax. Cinemax, yeah, yes. Yeah, because of all and, the yeah. soft core stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, then they used to call um, Nickelodeon Nickelodeon. <laughs> Then they had uh, Nick Jr., which they called Nick Jr. Oh, okay. <clears throat> makes and sense. then Nick at Night, they called uh, yeah, Night, yeah. Nick at Night. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was MTV, which they used to call music television. Ooh. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> when it played music. Um, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Here's another 10 out of 10. We'll do a good one now to round this off with something positive. Yep. Um, this is from Sazachik. Sazachik? Hmm. Sazachik. Um, from November 8th of 2001. 10 out of 10. An adventure. Now, come on. You can't expect Oscar quality from a 20s comic book turned movie, but it was a fantastic adventure. How often are movies like that made? Indiana Jones, off the top of my head. I can't think of any others much like that. The Phantom tried, though, and it was good. It was an adventure packed with action and romance. (laughs) Just ignore the purple tights. (laughs) No, come on, those are cool. It's what made Kit Walker, quote-unquote, different as a comic book superhero. Besides, Billy Zane can totally pull it off with his body. (laughs) (laughs) Body! (laughs) Exclamation point. (laughs) That was it. Okay, 10 out of 10. (laughs) <laughs> so any other thoughts on the movie before we wrap up the thing you gotta wrap though any of your thoughts I gotta wrap my thoughts yeah because oh, we're wrapping shoot. up I... <laughs>
Well, to, I can't rap, but I, I can do beatboxing. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't rap, though. Well, you know uh, what? I'm not going to rap either. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I can do some decent beatboxing just from constantly doing it all the time, but, but not because I'm talented, just because I just do it. Uh, yes. And uh, So any other thoughts about no, the movie? No, just the movie was it was pretty decent. I would, I would give it a probably... I'd say... Would you if, recommend anybody watch it? Yeah, I would. I would, I would say it's a 5 out of 10. I'd, I'd give it a half, but... Because it's not great, but, you know, it's 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 funny. You know, mm-hmm. it's got some good stuff in it. You know, Treat Williams is, is hilarious in it. Yes. You know, yeah, the fighting is pretty stupid and corny, but, you know, it's it was... I liked it. I think it's worth it just for Treat Williams. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I think if we just took the movie and took all the Treat Williams <laughs> scenes and put those together, somebody's got to do that. Yeah. If you're, if you're listening to this, yeah. edit that um, edit that bitch up and put it on... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put it on YouTube. <laughs> Just the scenes of Treat Williams. Yeah, you'll be like ten, all ten minutes of comedy. Like, yes, you know. it'll be the greatest thing on. Unless it's already up there, I'll look Some it up. Might have yeah, it might that. be. If it is, I'll link it in the show notes. Okay. But um, yeah, um, because that's all you need to see. I mean, Billy Zane's cool and all, but and so is Christy Swanson and Catherine Zeta Jones, but. Treat Williams. Yeah, come he, on. He, he's a treat. He is a treat. He's a treat. He's a very just true treat. True treat. Okay. Um, he's a, he's a funny treat in this movie. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's not a trick. He's a treat. <laughs> treat Williams. Yep. That should be on his. That, oh. sh- that should be on his tombstone. <laughs> that when should he dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We already he wasn't. Heard. He wasn't a trick. He was a treat. Just, let's plan that out already. <laughs> yes. Email him. Yes, I will. Hey, treat. Uh, you should, you know, make preparations, and if he doesn't, I'm gonna go and deface this tombstone. And put that on there. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Everwood ruled. Anyways, um, so <laughs> seriously, it was a good show. I liked Everwood, um, which was, uh, I believe, um, yeah, Everwood was created by Greg Berlante. Uh, okay. Which which brings us full circle here to yeah. the comic book world because he created the Arrowverse mm-hmm. or the Berlanti verse as I like to call it. The Berlanti. Because it's more appropriate than Arrowverse because Arrowverse just kind of – because now that Arrow's going <laughs> off the air. Yeah, because like – I mean I, I understood yeah. why they called it at first because that was the first show yeah. that started it. But like, you know, it's not the – like he's not – like Arrow's not like the leader of the mm-hmm. whole, you know, um, series or whatever series of shows. I mean, like, he's, you know, obviously, I'll, like, like I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to, like, actually for, like, legitimately cry at the end of Arrow. Like, oh, yeah, like, me too. I, because I've become so attached to the character of Oliver Queen. But it's just, it's like, just amazing you know, that, you know, Berlanti, what he's done, I mean, he created Everwood, he, he's got to start working on Dawson's Creek as a writer. He was one of the producers of the show for a while, too, like, after Kevin Williamson left. And, uh, you know, and they created brothers and sisters and all this other stuff. And then he went on to create this, these great <coughs> superhero shows. He's created. And then he's created Riverdale and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina as well. That's right. Because yeah. I, I went out, I was watching Riverdale over the summer and I saw mm-hmm. that CW and the Berlante thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but just think about the fact that, like, you know, when people talk about this whole, like, you know, Marvel versus DC. Sorry, I'm like going away from the mic for, yeah, uh, that's like, fine. Marvel versus DC, blah, 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 bullshit. It's like, you know what? You know, they're both good universes. You know, shut up with this bullshit about, like, oh, the, 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 the DC doesn't have a version of Spider-Man. Okay, well, you know, they don't have to have, like, each versions of things. Like, they can have their whatever. But, like, this guy created, like, six different shows based on these superheroes. Yeah. Right? Cause or there's, co-created them. There's, or well, yeah, there's Arrow. I'm just going by order of when they first appeared. Well, like, well so there's Arrow, Arrow Flash, Supergirl, uh, Supergirl um, Legends. Legends of Tomorrow, Black Lightning. And now Batwoman. And Batwoman. That's six shows. Yeah. I mean. Not to mention, you know, the, the other shows he's created. Right. You know, like I said, like Riverdale and the <clears throat> Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So, yeah. That's pretty amazing. And then he, he also wrote and directed the uh, comedy, the, the romantic comedy drama film Love, Simon, which got a lot of good critical acclaim for it. So, huh. yeah. <clears throat> you know, and he's only he's only five years older than me. Oh, yeah? That makes me feel old. And, like, I haven't done enough in my life. Well, man. you know, not everyone is going to be able to, you know, get strike, you know, 
gold that much and create six, you know, superhero shows and or co create and but I want to. Well, I know Matt. you want to. I'm just saying I want that to, not Matt. everyone strikes gold. You know it's, why not? It just happens. I don't know. Why not me? There's really no reason why. Why not me? Why not me? Well, don't say why it like that because then it's not gonna why happen. Not because me? quit crying. <laughs> but I want to cry, Matt. No, no. <laughs> Come on, Baby Yoda. Don't do it. I'm the baby. Oh God. Uh, I'm the baby Yoda. Uh, yeah, we heard that. Uh oh. That music, what? I have a new meme. What? Oh no! Da baby oh, Yoda. Oh my god! Don't do it. Okay. Don't. You gotta put Yoda's head on him or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> da baby Yoda. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Hey, that yeah, might. That might yeah, actually. Ooh, <clears throat> that would be a good idea. Like, we should get into the meme Rap world. Good, he does. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about no, that. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> actually, he's, he's like pretty good actor. Maybe you yeah. know that was okay. That scene mm-hmm. with the uh, Christmas caroling was pretty. Yeah, good. as we record this, uh, <clears throat> Jennifer Lopez and the baby were on uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, we took so, a break and yeah, watched, watched that. Yeah. <clears throat> so this probably will be like you know weeks from right, right. Back, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> Anything else before we uh, sign off here, mm-hmm. Damat? Damat? No. Uh, Damascus? Damat? Damat? Kiss? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Damat? Kiss? That sounds kind of weird. Like Damat? Like like you kiss people? I, I got kiss like uh, a kissing um, uh, service. I can't talk. <laughs> a kissing. But there you go. I can't think of anything. Uh, uh, like in uh, was a pie day. There was a wasn't there. A, There's yeah, a kissing. Booth that's right. There was a scene yeah. in that. All right. Like mm-hmm. you know, that's my no. It's not my. Pie story. day die day. <laughs> out now on DVD. Yeah. Well, it's been out for a while. And streaming. Uh, Check out pie day die day dot com for more information. And that's spelled with a P I. Yeah, that's P I D I E. Yeah. I mean P I D A Y P I. Oh no wait. What am I doing? All right, I see. Uh, P I space. D-I-E. No, it's, it's one word. Oh, it's all one? For, 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 the, for the website. Oh, okay. P I D A Y D I E D A Y Pi Day Die Day dot com. So just go to Pi Day Die Day dot com dot com yeah. for a nice film written by Lindsay LaForest and directed by Michael Edward Cohen the second. Well, that's you, though. Yes, it that's is. That's you. Mm-hmm. Talking about myself in the third person. Okay. And I have no issues with that. You know, Trump does that a lot. <clears throat> Talks about himself in a third person. That's because we have the best words. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm. it's true. I have the best just, words. You know, just just for you know a bit of advice. Mike, 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 <laughs> Mike, Mike has the best words. Mike, has Trump best. has the best words. Yeah, Matt does not have the no, best I words. No, I don't. I don't have the no. best words. No, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I don't. But uh, but um, just a little piece of advice because I'm. Um, you know, this movie kind of had a little thing too about you know he's like the guardian of like the jungle and stuff. And the jungle, you know, you think about the environment because it's like you know that's like nature has been not. Sorry, I keep touching the table. Um, what's that? Oh no, I'll, go ahead. Oh, yeah. uh, nature has been like you know uncorrupted by man stuff like that. So <clears throat> you know, in order to protect your environment, I'm begging you guys, please, please. Do not flush your toilet 15 times every single time you go to the bathroom, okay? It's terrible for the environment. Don't do it. No. I don't care how much you had to pee. I don't think it's that much to to warrant 15 flushes, but according to, um, you know, our dear king, uh, Trump, he, you know, says don't, you know, people are flushing their toilets 10 to 15 times every time they go to the bathroom. Yeah, think, if you're going to the bathroom, even... Even just three times a day, that's that's forty five flushes. I mean that's that's way too much, you know, and so that's so, not normal. No. Well it's not people are doing it apparently all over the country though. They're just they're just having flushing parties. And that's what's hurting our environment. Yeah. Not the not not not, no. not the cars Mm-mm. or the No or, or the plastic or the No, none of that stuff. People are having flush parties. They just go over to someone's house, they just drink some beers, maybe watch a sports game. Sports game of any kind doesn't have to be football. Just any. I, I, I just go flush I, toilets. I like though. watching sports games. Yeah, sports games and flushing toilets is a new, mm-hmm. uh, a new thing that people are just new craze. Yep. You know, we thought vaping was bad. Try every, the flush parties; they're even worse. Every weekend, I invite people over, and all we do is flush toilets and watch sports games. <laughs> you know those ones where the the, the 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 team and or player with the most points wins at the end. Yes. <laughs> 
sports games. Sports games. Someone should make a video game just called <laughs> sports games, like a, like a, like an a Atari type of game. Well, they already have like Wii Sports. And they actually, <laughs> but they actually make it for the Atari, like make their own mod yeah. and actually put it onto an Atari cartridge. And just call it sports games. Sports games. What's your favorite sports game? My favorite sports game is to play or watch. What do you think? What, how, uh, to, to watch. <clears throat> and probably to watch football, but I don't really watch football that much. I like I watch to watch. Games. I like to watch the baseball. The baseball. Yeah, baseball sometimes is okay when, to watch. When 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 the players the players play the baseball <clears throat> with the ball, the ball and the bat. <clears throat> but my favorite sport to play is uh, tennis. I don't play it that often, but it's like that's the game I actually like. My favorite play. sport to play is bowling. Bowling's cool. I like bowling. <laughs> Bowling is cool. I like that. So that's a little bit of information yeah. you guys didn't think you would hear from us today on, <laughs> on this episode of The Phantom in our crisis on Infinite Films. Oh. So, um, yeah, I think that's all for right now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to let you folks go here. i got to go flush my toilet 15 times, <laughs> and um, I'll let you know how it goes. See you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast. A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.